Let's go ahead like we did before. You've got two points. We're going to join them up. So we're going to have the interval A, B, like so. And this idea of gradient is how steep is this line? In fact, with another color, if you could um, draw an arrow out from your heading, I think that's the best plain language definition for gradient that you can come up with. How steep is this line? This question of steepness is a really big deal, but it's sort of clouded from you, uh, a disguise from you, why? Because at the moment, I've got horizontal axis, which I'm calling X, and a vertical axis, which I'm calling Y. By the way, I'm missing the most important point on the plane, which is zero. Very right. good, okay. So, I've got X and Y, but no one really knows what X and Y signify. They're just places on the axes. However, if X and Y are something meaningful, like for example, X might be, going across, might be the passage of time. And Y might be temperature, how much the temperature is at any particular time in the day. When you look at steepness, what that tells you is how one thing, like temperature, is changing according to something else. If you have a look at this, for example, that might be the temperature starting from below zero and then increasing up until this point at some time later in the day, like right now, it's quite warm. Okay. So therefore, this question, Go that way, Georgia. Thank you. This question of the steepness of a line tells you a whole lot about what the situation means, which is why next year, when the vast majority of you do two unit or extension one maths, just wait until you're ready. When the vast majority of you do that, you will find. But this idea of steepness is right at the core of this topic that we call calculus, which is literally the heart of what two unit mathematics and extension one is. So this is a really big deal, which is why I'm gonna dwell on it a little bit. Okay, now, just like we did before, there's a right angle triangle that's hidden away here that I haven't drawn, and we're going to put it in <coughs> so that I can measure gradient. <coughs> can anyone see where the right angle triangle is? Yes. Can you, can you imagine it, right? Yeah. From B, I'm going to draw a line interval down like this, and I'd love you to do the same. Is like that. To do it left, left. You can do it left, but I'm going to tell you a minute why I'm, I'm not going to. And then over here, you've got this guy coming across, okay? There's my right angle. Now, we used this before to calculate what? What were we doing with this right angle triangle? Pythagoras. We were doing Pythagoras to work out the distance on that hypotenuse, right? Now, we know, oops, I just dropped some bits off. We know, therefore, that this vertical distance, right, we put it into the Pythagoras formula to get that length. What was it? It's going to be, in this case, 2 take away what? Minus three. Yeah, negative 3, which makes it 5. Okay, but more generally speaking, it's one of the y coordinates and you take away the other one. Do you remember that? Do you remember it coming up inside underneath the square root in the uh, distance formula? Yeah. Now, when we're talking about gradient, we give this guy a specific name. We call it rise. Okay? But it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. It's how far up have you gone? Rise. In the same way, you've got this guy down the bottom. I'll just put it over here since I've got more space. Rather than y2 minus y1, it's horizontal. So therefore, it's x2 minus x1. In exactly the same way, when we talk about gradient, we give it a name. We call it gradient. Okay. So just as a side note, put this um, over to the side because it doesn't relate to our particular conversation right now. But you know the distance formula, right? Distance equals, and then there's square root, blah, 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 blah. Well, you can call these things you can give them these names, right? You can just call that rise squared plus run squared. That's the two things that you're calculating. It's the same pieces that go into the distance formula as the gradient formula I'm about to write down. Jake? How do you know which one's one? Yeah, good question. Okay, now, interestingly, and I'm going to um, draw on this one first, for both the distance and for the gradient formulas, it actually does not matter which one is 2 and which one is 1. 
I'll explain why for gradient it is in a second. I wonder if you can work it out. Let's just look at this one first, okay? If I wrote down here, uh, right, that's y2 minus y1, right? Just suppose I like picked the wrong one and um, had them backwards, okay? In this case, here, it doesn't matter which way. Can anyone tell me why it doesn't matter? Mm. Jennifer. Okay, so it has to do with this guy. Do you see this? Watch what happens. Uh, if we put some numbers in here, what was the number we got here this time? We got a uh, two take away negative three. So this is five, isn't it? Right? <coughs> five. That's the length. Okay. I just suppose I did it backwards, like chose the other way around. And we wrote negative three minus two. What would you get? You would get negative five. Now hold on a second. If you're squaring, we looked at this under thirds, do you remember? If you're squaring, he doesn't care whether you're five or negative five. You square it, they both become 25, and they, they go underneath the square root and they simplify. Okay, does that make sense? Now, in the gradient formula, which let's write down now, gradient, which by the way, is denoted with a lowercase m, uh, rather than g for gradient, because g is usually used for gravity. Um, lowercase m, what is the formula for gradient then, in terms of all this stuff? Yeah, nice and loud, Lily. Very good. Rise over run and so how high have you gone versus how far have you traveled horizontally which as we've just noted over here I can put in all the X and Y's that make that happen y2 minus y1 there's the rise over x2 minus x1 there's the run okay after you've written it down put your pen down for a second I'm going to pose the question to you that we just did over here that it turns out, because you're squaring <laughs> things, doesn't matter which one you put first. You can go uh, uh, 2, take away negative 3, or you can do negative 3, take away 2. It doesn't make a difference because you are, man, whatever. Because you square, right? So no big deal. You lose the information about whether it was negative or not. You don't, you don't care about it. In here, it turns out, it also doesn't matter. But there's nothing being squared, so why does it not matter which one you make which one. Any suggestions? Jake? There is division. Obviously, it's right there at the core of the gradient function, okay? Um, the gradient formula, I should say. But division does matter if things are negative or positive, sh shouldn't it? So I think division is related, but that's not enough. Like, just because you're dividing, it's not like squaring. Squaring just gets rid of all your negative and positive. What's going on? Hmm. What do you reckon, Daniel? Yeah, so because it's a fraction, so let's say if there's negative 1 over negative 1, it's, it equals to 1. Okay, so this is a helpful strategy that Danielle's sort of clued us into, which is when something looks hard algebraically, let's just think about some numbers and maybe the pattern will become clear. Let's work out this gradient. Uh, let's do it this way first. You said to me, this number, take away this number. That will give me a rise. So what I want you to do with me is to label which one is which now. So if you said this one, take away this one, which one is 2 and which one is 1? Or I should say, which one's y1 and which one's y2? A is y1. I think this is y1, isn't it? And this is y2. Do you agree? That's how I get this one, take away that. So can you label that with me? This is y2. This is y1. That means I've got this being x2 and this being x1. Are you okay with that? Well, if, if you put that y2, can you have that as, as x1? Or do you have to have no? You cannot. So that does matter. It's like, this is the second point. This is the first point. Okay. So it's consistent. Okay, now let's watch what happens as we actually work out this gradient. So just as an example. I'm already, you've already worked out the rise. m equals 5 over, okay, what's the run? It's going to be 3 because it's 4. Take away 1. There's your x2 minus x1, so 3. I could write that as 1 and 2 thirds, but I don't need to. That's fine. Okay. Now, let's see what happens if I do it in reverse. If I now say, let's go rather than this, take away this, I'll do it backwards. This one, take away this one. What's the rise now? Uh, minus 3. Minus sorry, negative 3 minus, minus 2. Five. 
That's the negative five, right? Okay, that's the, that's the rise. What's the run? Minus three. Because I'm doing it in reverse order, I'm now going to say instead of four take away one, I'm going to go one take away four, which is negative three. But, but hold on. That's the same thing. Do you see why it's the same thing? Right? Um, the reason why here it doesn't matter which way you put it is you square it and he doesn't care. You square five, you square negative five, same deal. The reason this one, this one doesn't matter is because if you turn the top around, you also turn the bottom around. So you introduce two negatives, they cancel out, it's the same thing. So that's one of the really nice things about the gradient formula and the distance formula. They're kind of hard to screw up, right? You can, you can make whichever point you want, A and B, and you'll still get the same answer at the end.